Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. <sighs> hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new folks that are stopping in here. Thank you for joining us for some good old outboard fun. Um, we've got a new victim there on the uh, lift to go into the tank, but we got to do a fax check. Because I don't know what's wrong with it. I can't even remember what the guy said. But uh, anyway, we'll get to that. Um, we finished up the little 5.0 cutie. So now we're going to get on this next little cutie. And I'll show you what it is. So I say let's go ahead and get at it. Okay, on this little 15 yammy. The thing is actually pretty clean. It looks like somebody has made a homemade head gasket. I'm not kidding you. Maybe not, but that's what it looks like almost. Hmm. Interesting. So... I've got my spark spider hooked up. You should be able to look right in those two, I think. Let's see if we get some spocky action. Oh, we got good sparky. On two. So now let's get the compressionis. Looking. The little spark candles looked, you know, they look pretty good, really. A little black on the tip there, but overall, it looks like it's been burning on the tip. Same with the Uda. And these are. B7HS10 and it looks cleaner than the other one. It looks like it's been burning on the tip. So let's get our compression gauge in this puppy. If I can do that. There we go. We're going to be on the bottomus. Cylinder. We are on a, a zero. Three hundred zero zero three hundred. We are on zero. Let's give it a four five. What do we have? What we get? We got about a hundred and twenty-five thirty. Got a hundred and thirty on the bottom. That's good! 130. Yeah. Okay. Let's see, we get on the top of this. Well, we have a zero. Let's give her some pulls. Over again, over again. We got 125, 30, 35, 135 on the top. So them numbers are very good. Yep. Well, at this point, what I think I'm going to do 
I just put the candles back in and then uh, dig me out a yammy snatch quick connect and let's just put it in the tank and see what happens. I'll Alrighty, I got uh, the fuel hooked up, choking it. I didn't put anything in the cylinders. They are dry other than whatever it came here with. So, let's see what happens. Turn on the noise box. gonna let that drain for a second but what we got going on here is the old typical dirty I would say typical dirty garbage raider but a lot of times on these Yamaha this vintage 9, <laughs> nine and 15s the diaphragms in the fuel pump which is part of the car body on this particular model they get all dirty and stiff and bloody 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 blah and they won't run they won't idle uh, without the choke being on that's what this one's doing so give me a second and we'll get my tools together and we'll get that old garbage radar off I'll be right back Okay, to get these old garbage raters off of there, you got two 10 millimeters that run the entire length of the carburetor. Then you got these little plastic snap-on things that hold the, uh, whatever you call it, the choke, and not the choke, the uh, mag advance. Come on. It pops either sideways or up, up. Okay, that pops out. And just slide it back out your way. Then you got a Phillips screwdriver. Pay attention to the length here. If you've never taken one of these off, you can also, if you want, take a little scribe and scribe it there. But if you just look there on this one, you got just a little over a quarter inch. 
and then pay attention if you've never done this pay attention to this little clip on the choke down here okay I'll print it out um, it's got one of these little plastic clips too but one end is longer than the other on the little clip and you need to pay attention to it I'll see if I can get it up here I need I should be using it flat there okay and just leave it in the handle but the end of the clip that goes to the handle is longer than the end that goes into the plastic air box part of the choke right there so pay attention to that take a video picture whatever okay you go ahead and take your air box off and then that's how that slips out of there and there's the old garbage raider and then of course you're gonna have a hose coming in on the other side to the fuel pump and it's got your standard little poke you under the thumbnail make you scream say words that'll make a sailor blush when it goes under that thumbnail the little clip that holds the hose on you know what I mean. you know what I mean and there's the garbage raider and the fuel pump and so we're gonna take all this apart so that's all there is to getting them off um, a lot of times I'll zip this recoil and flop it out of my way too just makes it easier I didn't do it this time but I do sometimes now we're gonna zip this puppy apart and see how bad it is Actually looks really good in there. Bowl's nice and clean. Let's set that over there. And get me one of these pickium things. Plectriums. I don't know what they call. Just float. Okay. Our float and our knee. There's our little rubber plug. There's a little more gas. It's actually pretty clean inside. But now, will them orifices come out? Hey, we are one for one. Boop. Look at that. Now, did you see how I did that? For you folks that are kind of new to messing with these carbs, um, get you a screwdriver that's shoulderless. You know how some screwdrivers, they flare out and then come, you know, you want, you want a nice shoulderless straight one that fits it really well. And you, when you know you've got it in the slot, at the same time you turn it, give it a good push down and turn and pop. A lot of times they'll pop like that. A lot of times they won't. Sometimes you ain't getting them out. But mm, that's what I like to do is give it that nice big hard. I'm going to have to go in here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Beep. There. So how we do it? I'm gonna push that out. That, there's we good. We got the jets out. Um, now I counted this in. I don't know if you saw me doing that. I'm sure you did on the video. I counted this in. It was two turns to a light seat going in, and then I backed it back out to two and a half, then three, and it didn't 
change. So I know that the initial setting on this needle here is two turns out from a light seat. We know this. See there. Yeah, she kind of yucky. Let's look at this transition chambers. All right, let me go ahead and pop these. They're kind of salty. Ooh, very salty. That one ain't. We're gonna have to be careful with that one so we don't break it off. And I can kind of show you a little hack I do on these when I get these things that are real tight like that one. This one's a little tight, but it ain't as bad as that other one. Okay. Yep, that'll come out. That'll come out. That'll come out. This guy is a little tight, but what I do is a little bit out, a little bit in, a little bit out, and that's where this zippy gun comes in handy. Once I do this a little bit, then I'll run it in and out with the zippy gun. But this one's tight enough. Another tool that I have that is real good for these tight screws. And like I said, I could just, with those teeth, these are called van pliers. And they've got teeth on the side, and if you look right at the very tip of them, they got nasty little teeth. And when you've got a hard screw like that, they'll grip it good. But again, in and out, in and out, in and out. You don't want to just go and reef on that or you'll end up breaking it off. So. in and out. So it's being tight. Being tight. In and out. In and out. She's coming. Just gonna take a little time. Keep all my stuff straight. So that's the hack. In and out. See that thing's all, you can, I don't know if you can see it, it's all chalky. But we'll get some lube on there. Yeah, don't go reefing on it. Or else you'd get broken that aluminum body. And you don't want that. Put the van pliers away. The van pliers. All right, so we're getting things apart here. See how we're looking in there. Oh, yeah. Okay, on these little yammies up in this top chamber here, you've got a bunch of little holes that you need to take a wire and uh, get in them little holes. And I mean, it, you got to use a small wire, something like out of a little wire brush. Or whatnot and you got to get in there and, and get that out of there and there's a bunch of them those two brass ones you know and just get in there and week 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 and a lot of times you can see it come through down here make sure all that's unplugged you know little wire like this in addition to blowing it out with air you know let me uh so I've run the wires through all that and cleaned that up. And in addition, give all of them a good shot of air. Blow, blow any buggers in there. And 
get it out of there. And I've already, same thing, with your little jet holes, take your wire. I already sprayed this with some of that intake carb cleaner. Then you get your weeka 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 weeka. Take your time, get all them little holes going that way. Come down through the main chamber there. And make sure, you know, you can hold it up to the light. If you got a white cloth like I'm using here, um, that really helps. Uh, turns out, this diaphragm, I took this uh, fuel pump, and this side of the diaphragm don't look bad. All I'm going to do with that one is take a little tri-flow and maybe a little bit of petroleum gelios and rub on there. It's not all crinkled. It looks pretty good. But if you look at this one, you see how, hopefully you can see that in the camera. It's all crinkled up and it's pretty hard. So I keep a bunch of these diaphragm things on on hand and I'll go through here and I'll find the one that I need which is right there okay hopefully you can see the difference there's the old one that's all crinkled up and everything and there's a new one nice and smooth so and I went ahead and replaced this gasket anyway um, yeah so now the fun part is getting everything back together. Mm -hmm. I'm getting all the screws back in there. That's the fun part. But it can be done. I forgot to clean and put this back in, the uh, emulsion tube. Same thing, we got to take the little needles, make sure all them little hers is open. I was like, where's that thing at? But I found it. I, I found it. It looks pretty clean. Okay. Okay, now we gotta put our little needle back in. And remember what I said, it was all the way in to a light seat and then two out. Okay, let's go ahead and get the fuel line on and the little kill the fingernail clip. Which is nothing more than a piece of bent wire. Okay, now you got to uh, put this little deal with the Phillips screw, your throttle. I'm going to go ahead and get that and make sure it's in there. I can't remember if I tightened it first, but anyway, I know it was about a quarter inch in there, about right in there. Maybe a little more right there. That's it. That's the spot. Okay. And then... Uh, Got this other guy, but you're gonna have to get that choke in the breather and all. So I'm gonna leave it a little loose right there, I think, like that. I'll hold off on that one. Okay, let's go ahead and get our air box, which is also your choke. See, here's where I'm talking about a lot of times I just take that 
the recoil off. It just makes it easier because it's not in your way. In fact, I think I'll do that right now because it's in my way. And it don't take but a second. To zip that out of my way. And just set it right there. See, that makes it a little bit easier getting at that choke if nothing else. And that, that choke... Come on around here. You see, this has got to go down and down and down and down to your choke lever, which has this stupid little wire thing, which I hate because I've got big old fat feeners. But we'll get it in there. We'll get it in there. Okay, it's in there. And how's that go? No, it's not in there. Close. Because you got to, con there, ouch. You got to contend with that little plastic clip. Now, you can get to these bolts that hold the whole thing on. Line everything up. There we go. And get my zippy 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 gun. Those zippy zippies. Nice and slow. There we go. Alright, now this thing. Here's advanced there and it goes in this other little plasticky plasticky fine little thing and you can see we got about a quarter inch it's just slightly moving the throttle there here's your adjustment screw we'll deal with that in a minute okay everything's snug the hose is on the clamps on the hose now I can't remember which way that stupid interlock thing <laughs> I never can remember where these are supposed to go. I, th I thought they went up across there. My man Sergey said no. Nope. I think he said it goes beneath. This one, this one was beneath. We got everything hooked up. Let's see what we get. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on? Oh, I missed that. I missed this little thing here, so I'm going to have to. What am I doing? I can just loosen that screw, I think. Let me try that. See, well, oh, let me turn on the noise box.
Oh, well, I'd say we got that little yummy snack straightened out. Let me move you back right over here. And tilt it just a little. Okay. Oh, we forgot to do this. Uh, sorry. Might as well give it a little love there. Make it look all pretty. Yeah. Give it a little love. You can see it sits outside quite a bit, but there we go. That's better. That we go. <laughs> Spin you around. I'm gonna spin. Spin you around. Okay. Well, we got the little yummy 15 all squared away. Um, it's just starting to rain. It's been a gloomy last couple of days, but it cleared up just long enough for me to mow the grass. Mow the grass. Mow, mow the grass. Well, now, as of this moment right here, right now, I am caught up on outboards for the first time this season. That is amazing. I am actually caught up. I haven't... Now, I've still got a couple outboards that I've done already that, of course, they haven't paid and picked up yet. But I am done. I'm, I'm actually caught up. I cannot say that about lawnmowers and such. I've got like five of those yet to do. But uh, outboard-wise, this was the last one I had in that uh, was a customer's that needed servicing. And I've got that one all squared away. And uh, these diaphragms... Um, I've got another video <sighs> and I, it's titled something like Yamaha 9915 common problem and these diaphragms will they, they will cause these things it's really frustrating because um, they're like seven bucks each for these little things and uh, and it's just not a, a good design. I mean, I, I don't understand. I got, like, the Evinrude diaphragms. I, I rarely seem to, ha I mean, I'm trying to say this right. With the Evinrudes, the diaphragm, that spring system and all they got, seems to alleviate this problem to a large degree. Not always. I mean, you'll get them where the fuel pumps, where they're so bad that even the little spring cup design that Evinrude OMC uses, um, they still pump fine. Um, these Yamahas, they just got the two little flappers and they count on these diaphragms to move the fuel through and when they get all hard, um, They just won't pump fuel. They won't idle unless you pull the choke out and really make a lot of air move through there and all. They they just or excuse me, fuel move through there. They won't they won't idle until until you replace these diaphragms. At least that's what I found. Now, could you reuse these if you refreshen them and stuff? I've actually taken them, and this one I don't know if you can still see that crease that's in there right across the, the center of it there. But I've actually take, taken them and, and worked them with Vaseline, then put them in between two pieces of cardboard, which then I sandwiched between two little pieces of plywood and smashed them in my vise and let them sit there for two or three days. 
and the crinkles and the wrinkles still don't seem to come out. They do get a little more pliable, but most of us are not going to take go through taking the carb, taking it apart and all that and chance using old diaphragms anyway. So, but it, it's kind of frustrating because it is a common problem with this these this vintage um, I'm not sure what year this thing is, but the one, the Yamaha two-strokers that have the fuel pump as part of the car body. So, but anyway, it's getting a little late, and I think I'm going to wrap this one up here. So, as always, that is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.